I don't want you to be frustrated with flower breeding and I care about you being successful at it. If you've just started playing the game or trying your hand at flower breeding after a couple of failed attempts, then this video is aimed at you, which is why this is the ultimate flower guide. Hey YouTube, it's Alexi Giovanni here and when it comes to flower breeding, I highly recommend starting with, hey Sid, come on, I'm trying to show my viewers how to breed flowers, not sing. There, that'll do it. Now where was I? Ah, I highly recommend starting with flowers from either Leaf here when he visits your island. When Leaf is not on your island, you can find him when he's at Harv's Island since the 2.0 update, which you can unlock him for 100k bells. The other place of course that you can get seed flowers is from Nook's Cranny. Note though there is some logic in the game as to which are your native flowers which you get readily available at Nook's Cranny versus other flowers which Leaf will sell you. Now let's head off up here where we'll find a bunch of harder to breed purple, green and blue flowers. I'll have a follow up video on this one which will show you how to get them. But if you want specifically these flowers, I'll leave a linked videos in the description below for you to watch after this one. Oh and please do me a huge favour and like the video if you're enjoying it so far. Thanks. It's important to note that flowers can either be bred or cloned. Cloning is a technique to make an exact copy of the original flower by leaving no compatible flower in the surrounding eight tiles around the flower. This is either through empty ground or flowers of a different type. Breeding flowers involves two flowers which doesn't matter how they sit to each other as long as they're touching each other horizontally, vertically or diagonally. You can also tile them like these blue and red windflowers, but I'll cover more about that in a bit more detail in just a moment. Same colour flowers can also be in groups of four, like these four red windflowers just down here, which is a recommended technique. When you're trying to breed two colours of a given flower, a mistake many make is to put them in groups of four and one. You're better off putting them in a dedicated pairs or in diagonal pairs. The reason is that if any yellow one is decided by the game to be fertile on a given day, it'll choose the nearest one, which in this case is a red. The other three flowers will be left with no one to breed with, usually resulting in a wasted clone. When involving flowers of two colours, it's best to have them paired with only one other, either horizontally, diagonally or vertically. Now let's head over to this section. Flowers won't breed unless they're watered by either rain or a watering can, so let's go over the fundamentals of watering. There are three can types in the game. The first one you'll get access to is the flimsy watering can, which only waters one flower at a time and will break after 30 waters, meaning you won't get very far. Can you see the water drips? That's enough to prove that it's been watered. If you want to get serious about watering, a flimsy can just won't cut it. It'll take way too long to water with. Let's just drop this one back down again and head to the next one. The second type is a regular watering can, which you can buy from Nook's Cranny after the first upgrade. These cans will last 60 waters, but unlike the flimsy can, will water six flowers at a time. Note that it's best to stand amongst the flowers to get your best coverage as seen by the blue colored flower. In addition to the drips, you'll also see a sparkle come from the flowers. Let's see that again on replay. No doubt your eye is looking to that set of flowers to the left. Let's again drop this one and head to the next batch. The third type of can is the golden watering can, which you can only get the recipe to once you get your island to five stars. The best part about the golden watering can is it does light work of a big flower garden. It waters nine spots, which by standing on the blue flower here gives you coverage of nine flowers directly in front of you. That's a three by three tiles, inclusive of where you stand. Now that's quick watering. As the name suggests, there's another reason why this is called a golden watering can. And that's because it has the ability to breed golden roses when watering black roses. Once you have one or more black rose, you can water it with a golden watering can, which gives you the chance to get gold roses. Note, if you're curious on whether gold roses are bred from two black roses or a single black, don't move as the answer is coming in a moment. Black roses are obtained by breeding two red seed roses, which gives you black roses 
25% of the time. Now, back to my question about gold roses needing one or two parents to be born. I did an experiment in an earlier video to find out whether or not gold roses are bred or cloned. These are interesting as I found out that you don't need a pair of black roses to get gold roses. You can have them tiled like this and you'll find that you can still get gold roses. What do you think? Are these gold roses cloned or bred? Or are they blown? You might have noticed that some of the flowers have different appearances and this is because there are four stages of flowers in Animal Crossing. On top of the fact that there are eight breedable flower types. The first stage is when the seeds are first planted which are known as the sprout stage. The next day they're known as stems. The third day of growth turns them into buds which is the first day that you can see their color. And on the fourth day is when you see a fully grown and they're in their final state. Both the bud and flower stage are capable of breeding so this is the best time to water them. However, generally speaking there's little point in watering flowers in their first two days of life. So. I'm just going to yell at them. They do come good though. It's also possible to pluck flowers when they're fully grown, which takes them back two stages back to the stems. Also, if you run through your flowers, it'll take them back to the bud stage. I use the plucking technique often when I want to force a flower not to breed. In this case, I'm plucking the outer flower which leaves the bud unable to clone due to lack of space to grow into. The bottom ones would have just cloned had I not plucked them. This is a great technique if you're focusing other areas of your flowers to grow. Here I've got a batch of flowers that have been well watered which you can tell from the golden sparkle. I'll cover that off very soon. Since all of these would have bred to the flowers next to them, I'm forcing them to clone by removing their potential breeding partner by plucking them back to stems. And also making sure that there's space for the buds to spawn into. Remember this technique when rare hybrid cloning. Let me know in the comments, is this a technique you've used in the past? In order to have flower breeding success, you're going to need friends, or more often than not, strangers around on your island. I've frequently had visitors pluck my flowers which as I just mentioned can force flowers to clone rather than breed. To avoid this, I found running through your flowers is a fantastic technique to avoid people being able to do that whether or not it's on purpose or accidentally. When you run through your flowers, they'll go back from stage 4 plants back to stage 3 which are buds and are still able to breed. Now these buds can't be plucked no matter how hard you mash that button. This is great insurance to ensure that you've got flower breeding success. You're welcome. So just to recap, stems are stage 2 of flower growth and can't breed. The next stage of their life, buds, which are stage 3, can breed. And of course, the fourth and final stage, plants, can also breed. Remember, plucking plants will send them back to stage 2, which are stems, and running through them takes them back to buds. Okay, so next topic. Watering bonuses. Watering flowers by yourself and expecting results is possible, but I'd have to admit, very hard. The more that foreign visitors come to your island to water, the higher the chance of your flowers choosing to breed. Each one of these garden beds is watered by the number of people indicated by the dye face on the easels. As I walk through them, you'll see the intensity of the sparkle increase and take special note of the sparkle on the sixth garden bed which have got a special type of golden sparkle. Are you curious to see how many flowers we got after this little watering experiment? Well, let's check it out. The first bed gave us zero flowers, which is a huge part as to why players give up on flower breeding. Bed two gave us one flower. Bed three gave us a curious four flowers. The chance of flowers breeding is a little bit more complicated, which takes into account the last time a flower bred before it can breed again. I guess they get tired. Far too complicated for this video, however I've found that the sweet spot is to have around 3 to 4 people if you can't get 5 people to your island. Here we've got Giovanni watering as the 5th visitor to this island. Alexi and Giovanni don't live on the same island, which is why this works. 
Watch how the flower sparkles to Giovanni, indicating that he's watered it, versus what it looks like from Alexi's eyes. Once you see them sparkle gold, you're, um, golden. This means you're going to have the maximum flower output. If you're trying to grow flowers, don't do it on the beach. They just won't grow, nor will they breed. They're sort of trapped in time. And if you're watering for someone, don't bother if they're on the beach. You'd be wasting your time. Interesting fact though, weeds will grow on the beach. That's if you're trying to grow weeds. I guess that's just one of those weird Nintendo things that they leave in the game to keep us all fascinated. I can't stress enough the importance of marking your ground with terraforming to keep yourself honest. I've lost count the number of times that this has saved me just being able to differentiate originating flowers versus ones that have been bred or cloned. Check this out after days of neglect. This is the beauty of the Animal Crossing community coming together and helping one another. I'm grateful to have had the help with watering as it is the key to success, along with knowing which flowers to breed of course. Here we've got each one of the types of cans being represented from flimsy, regular and golden cans. Once my helpers have come and gone, this is what you're aiming for. Flowers sparking an amazingly bright golden sparkle, which still gives me butterflies in my stomach from excitement and anticipation for what the new day will bring. Here we have a side by side with a top down view of being the day before we just saw with a bunch of golden sparkles and the bottom is the day after with the results of the watering and breeding prowess. Imagine trying to match this with just watering yourself. It just doesn't compare. So if you've got a Nintendo online, get yourself some friends and help each other out watering. This still works with local play by the way, so do try it with your next get together. Here's my obligatory character clapping moment and let me know in the comments, are you hashtag online or hashtag offline? If you've got a keen eye, you might have seen these funny little spots around my island in previous videos or streams. If you've ever wondered what these are, you're in for a treat. I'm about to explain. I use them to keep track of the children born from a given parent flowers. These are two roses which have produced a white rose, so I'll mark the floor with a white spot. These two tulips have created an orange tulip, so here I'll mark the ground with an orange spot. And, as you would have guessed, these two similar flowers have produced a yellow tulip, so again I'll mark that with a yellow spot. Have a guess of these ones. Purple and purple makes a purple spot. Now let's kick it up a notch over these few breeding results. The first time this pair had a baby it was a purple one, the next one was a white, and the third time was a red one. Now compare the same two flowers resulting in different colors. First one was a white, second time round was a green, and on the third day it was a purple. So this is the importance of being able to track the flowers so that you know what type of parents are breeding which flowers. To create these spots, just open up your custom designs app in your Nook phone and locate a blank or unused spot in your list and use the change design option. Use the L or R buttons to select the clear color, which you can see highlighted on screen. Then use the X button to pick the round stamping tool and use the Y button to cycle through the size. Pick the bigger size to then clean the canvas to a completely transparent background. Once you've done that, use the L button again to switch to a black color. And using the same biggest stamping tool, find the center point of the canvas and stamp a black dot. Now that you've got that, cycle through to the middle size stamp tool and change the color to whichever color you'd like to create. In this case, I'll go with white. Now the hard part, coming up with a creative name for your design. White seems to work for me. You can choose whichever method you'd like to place these onto the ground, whether it be the slower method using the display on ground option, or if you've got multiple spots to do, I'd highly recommend committing to the island design tool and unlocking the custom design option. This way you can put as many spots and as quick as you possibly can. 
Just pick the color that you'd like from your disposal of all the displays that you might have created and then just stamp away. Paint as many spots as you possibly need for a given flower breed. These three white spots represent three successive white breeding of these two roses. I've now provided you with all the knowledge you need to be an awesome flower breeder. Keep a lookout for an upcoming super breeding video where I'll walk you through a thorough guide of all the rare flowers. Whilst that's being edited, do check out the videos on screen to practice your newfound skills on. Shout out to my channel members including Platinum member Stacey Burton who gets the personal flower consulting as a perk. This is Alexi Giovanni signing off and until next time, see ya!